helicopter radars and war thunder. You rarely see them. Few of the helicopters use them, you hype yourself up for the radar, yet when you get the helicopter that has it, you either don't know how to use it or it's totally useless to you. Or is it really? Hello ladies and gentlemen, my name is Bob Dickinson and in this episode of Helicopter Academy, we're going to learn about helicopter radars in War Thunder. How they work, how to use them, and how we can utilize it to our own advantage. And find out if they are really worth it. But first, let's find out what they are. Welcome to the Helicopter Academy, a place where we all learn how to play a helicopter. The helicopter radars are used to identify objects on the ground, air, and maritime surfaces. It is also used to guide the ATGMs to the enemy target, whether if it's a radar missile or a fire and forget one. Radars such as Searchweather on the Skiroski SH-3 Sea King, ANAPG-78 Longbow on the Apache, and of course, the crossbow radar on the K-52. In War Thunder, there are a limited amount of helicopters that have radars. These include all the AH-64D Apache variants, such as the American AH-64D, the British AH Mark I, the AH-64DJP, and the AH-64D Saraf. The Russian K-52 and the Mi-28NM, and last but not least, the Chinese Z-19. Let's check out all the controls and functions of a normal radar. But before we do that, we need to learn how to read a radar scope. You can change the color of your user interface and change them to anything you want, including the radar scope. For now, we would like to put them in the default color for the sake of the academy. When you turn on your radar, you will see this on your screen. First off, switch your pizza slicer circular model to the rectangular one. This allows you to see your scans with more details. To do this, go to Options, Air Battle Settings, and look for Use Rectangular Radar Indicator. Turn it on. Please note that this will also change on your radar equipped aircraft and SBAA. First off, this is your radar range. The scope can now show radar contacts on these ranges. Depending on the radar, it can be from 0 to 8 or even 12 kilometers. Next up is your radar mode. Whether if it's on the air-to-ground, air-to-air, or MTI scan. This will be your horizontal scanning angle, and these are the specific angles that are indicated on the radar both horizontally and vertically. On the KE-52 and the AH-64D, the radar only sweeps from left to right, and you have to manually control the elevation or depression of the vertical angle. Speaking of vertical angle, this will show how elevated or depressed your radar is, which we will explain more a bit further into this video. Radar contacts are identified with a simple line, and selected targets are identified with a line inside a bracket. For some reason, the helicopter radars don't have IFF installed on them. The IFF stand for Identification of Friend and Foe. The first thing you have to do is to turn on your radar. Bind your key to this setting. Switch Radar Search on slash off. Personally, I bind my keys to the numpads. For example, the radar on is going to be on my numpad 5. Upon activating your radar, you should hear something like this. If you didn't hear anything like that in the game, well, me too. Though I wish it was implemented. After you turned on your radar and look at the radar scope, you may or may not see the enemy targets. And you may ask why? Well, it's because your radar angle is not correct. Please note that these two radar options and settings that I'm about to show you, which includes the radar elevation and manual target selection, are global and can affect your radar behavior not only on the helicopters, but also in the SPAAs and aircrafts. So you have to go back to Options, under the Air Battle tab, check Constant Elevation of Radar Antenna, then go back to Controls and bind these keys. Radar slash IRSD tilt control axis and try them out. This allows you to elevate or depress your radar on your helicopter, making your radar to scan targets far below you or far above you. Align your radar, 
and you can finally see the targets. As I said, the spotted targets are aligned with a simple line, and the selected targets are shown with a bracket around it. You can lock onto the enemy units by binding this key, Lock Radar Target On. This basically locks your gunner sight on the target. You can cycle the targets using this key, Select Radar Target to Lock On. But sometimes it's a little bit weird. It can also cycle and lock on dead targets, which is something you don't want to do. You can bind it and use it, but here's a better way on how to select a target more accurately. Find this option, Target Cyclic Switching of the Aircraft Radar, and turn it off. Also, bind the horizontal and vertical axes by looking for these two options. Horizontal and Vertical Radar slash IRSD Targeting Q Axis. This allows you to lock onto targets that are closer to each other with the better accuracy. I personally use the arrow keys as it's much more easier to do so. Go back and manually control it. As soon as you see the brackets next to your desired enemy target, lock onto the enemy. Sometimes the lock is not really complete, but it still gives you the estimation of where your target is. Congratulations, now you have learned how to select and lock a target. Let's go through some more options for your radar. In order to change the radar's range or the radar scope scale, you have to bind this key. Change radar scope scale. This allows you to scan targets within a shorter range with a bigger screen. And of course, changing the search mode. Changing the search mode allows you to scan targets more frequently. It may give you a limited scan view, but it gives you updates on enemy locations much faster. You can also bind this key, change radar search mode, to have a faster access to it. Now, if you haven't noticed, some helicopter radars like the longbow or the crossbow also have a mode called A-A. -A. You can also bind this key, change radar mode to, well, obviously change your radar mode. This is only available on the Apaches, K-52s, and Z-19. Alright, so in this section of the video, I was going to explain how the MI-28NM's radar would actually work. The fact that it has an MTI scan with all the presets and stuff. You see, here's the problem, I don't have the helicopter. Therefore, I really cannot say a lot of things about it. I really didn't have enough experience with the MI-28s in general. And me just going at the front blindly and just talking about all these kind of stuff, it's, you know, it's a little bit awkward. And, and making the footage without having the vehicle itself is going to be even more awkward. So instead of going out and embarrassing myself on the battlefield by not having the vehicle and stealing footage from other content creators, I'm looking at you, H6M. I would highly recommend you to watch this video from Hunter. Hunter is a skilled content creator in ground realistic battles. Not only he explains about the MI-28NM, but at the same time, he also demonstrates how the helicopter's radar actually works on the battlefield. Now let's check out what type of presets the radars have on different helicopters. The longbow radar on the AH-64D includes ground search mode and aerial search mode. The ground mode has two range presets with 8 and 4 kilometers, and with scan presets of 90 degrees, 45 degrees, 30 degrees, and 15 degrees. The aerial mode also has 8 and 4 kilometers range, with 360, 180, 90, and 45 degrees scan mode. The K-52's crossbow radar has a much more limited option, since the radar is located at the nose of the helicopter, instead of being a dome on the top of the rotors. The crossbow radar has 12 and 6 kilometers range, with 120 and 60 degrees for its radar scan. Just like the longbow, the radar on the crossbow has aerial scan as well, with, again, 12 and 6 kilometers range, and with 120 and 60 degrees of radar scan. Unfortunately, I do not have the Z-19 and the Mi-28NM. If you have these vehicles, you can test them and try them out and learn how the presets work. You can also tell us in the comments section on how much the range and radar scan angles these helicopters have. Okay, so the closest way I found to use a radar effectively was when I was in the Heli PVE and I manually selected the target via the radar. It was really interesting to use the keyboard itself to lock on the enemy targets, or at least close enough, but to be quite honest, you can immediately switch off your radar and use the sight itself and lock on the enemy targets. That way it is much faster and it just takes much less of your time. Overall, for helicopter nerds like me, it is really useful. But for your average helicopter player, 
yeah, you can, you can learn how to use it, but it will take a lot of your time. And I hope you enjoyed this video. You can always like and subscribe, dislike it if you dislike it. This is me, Bob Dickinson, signing out.